done, so that would be a question for her. But she did say last week to wait before you turned it in because she was going to walk you all through it because the system does look different okay. um, this semester than what you all seen previously. So you will have to answer that question at the end. Oh, actually, this is a second lab, but that's not due. So you're right. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so Berkshire, <clears throat> the color characteristics and things to pay attention to in um, for this particular species is black with six white spots. Your feet, the feet, nose, and tail. Their ears are erect. They originate from England. Desirable traits, their soundness, confinement, adaptability, meat quality, marbling, color, tenderness. Uh, undesirable traits, their short body, poor maternal characteristics, mothering and milking abilities. They have small litters, poor growth rate, and feed efficiency. Comments primarily considered sire breeds, oldest lineage of all swine breeds, originally uh, dish faced. Their pork is currently very popular in Japan because of their meat attributes. Uh, Brickshire Association developed breed. <clears throat> Certified branded products which has fit into a niche market with high demand. And so, so that is a somewhat common breed over here. It is definitely used. I've used those Berkshire in research when you're crossbreeding for some of those different characteristics that that um, breed, particular breed, displays. So your Chester White. Uh, other color mirrored qualifications, they have the droop ears. So a lot of your feed lot, op, your finishing pig lot operations, you will see the Chester White and the Yorkshire, they kind of favor, but they do have certain characteristics that stand out between the two. And so this is was originated in the U.S. and they are uh, known for their maternal traits they have aggressive bores in their muscular carcasses. Their undesirable traits, short body, slow growing. Um, they have dual purpose uh, breeding, so maternal and their sire strengths. So if they are crossbred, these are some of the uh, desirable traits that one would look forward to uh, breeding to uh, show up in the offspring. Uh, Duroc, which is a fun breed to uh, work with. They have a solid golden to deep brick red. They have the droop ears. And so a lot of the characteristics on a pig you'll be able to tell are their ear positioning, their colorations. If their tails are not docked, then you'll be able to tell some by their tail and their, their positioning of snout or lack thereof the elongation of the uh, snout. And this Duroc was originated in the U.S. They have excellent growth rates, very efficient feeders. Uh, they are very vigorous feeders and so they definitely love to eat and very protective of the food. Um, you see that once you work with them. Uh, but however, there are poor mothers uh, and problems with soundness. soundness. Um, and so again, they're used for a lot of crossbreeding. Uh, crossbred females are also popular. And so some of those desirable traits, they look forward to cross, um, try to cross out some of the mixed different species to cross out some of the less desirable traits to show for the more desirable traits in the next, uh, in, their, in, their, in their offspring. Hampshire, which I, call them Dalmatian pigs. <laughs> Once you start mixing them, depending on what you mix them with, you will start to see that, you know, speckled color when you're breeding them. And as you get to know the characteristics of different uh, breeds, you'll be able to look and say, okay, well, that one was mixed with Duroc and, you know, Yorkshire, because you'll be able to get more familiar with the characteristics and pick out the individual characteristics and see them show up in the offspring and you will be able to tell which, what 
type of purebred was their parent or what different characteristics are showing up from different breeds. So your Hampshire is black with the white belt entirely encircling the body, including both feet and legs. Uh, their ears are erect, so they stand out. The origin is Southern England. The job traits excellent carcass traits. They are meaty, muscular animals, and they have their soundness. Known for their soundness. Undesirable traits: boars lack libido. Uh, small litter, growth rate. Some lines carry gene noted for poor meat quality. Uh, used primarily as a sour breed or in the process to produce terminal sires. So again, if you read in through chapter 16, you will see why some of these traits or these comments are important when it says the meat quality and their growth rate and their litter, how that play comes into play as consumers or as growers of uh, pig producers. So your spotted pig again, making sure this is another black and white color, but it has a distinct difference um, from the previous, what was, from the, yeah, the Hampshire breed. And so make sure you are not confused in the coloration. You can't just say, oh, because it's black and white, it's this or that. You have to make sure where the coloration and the position of the colorations fall to be able to further identify which breed, <coughs> breed of uh, swan it is. And so this particular species has droop ears, uh, desire to trace their aggressive uh, libido bores, good growth rate and feed efficiency, scale size, substance to bone, long body, hardy adaptable variety of conditions. And so for animals, their adaptability being domestic, be, being in a domestic situation is very important. So you want those animals, those traits to show where they're very adaptable and resilient to a lot of different environmental uh, conditions. Um, their feed efficiency, how do they convert their feed in comparison to their body mass or body score condition is a very good trait that is, uh, oftentimes bred and cross with that uh, trait to show up in the next, uh, in next offspring. So undesirable trait and maternal and carcass characteristics so it can be undesirable. Uh, there's a sire breed. So your Yorkshire, the one that I said not to um, get confused, they are also white in color. Uh, their ears are erect, so make sure you are paying attention to the ears when you're doing your breeding quiz. Um, or if you're out in the field, I'm not sure what breeds to be in. I have not had the uh, opportunity to visit yet, hopefully soon. And so Yorkshire is a very common breed that um, is also is, is found in a lot of research facilities as well as uh, growing finishing facilities. So they're known for their maternal traits, uh, long body, their growth rates, aggressive libido of boars, and their soundness. Some of their undesirable traits and carcass characteristics, uh, extreme variation of muscling fat meat quality, so the consistency in the meat quality. Um, popular in the U.S., large white similar to Yorkshire's and imported from British Sweden, registered as Yorkshire Shires. So other swine breeds, you have your hybrid commercial breeding stock companies and seed stock producers have developed hybrids by crossing two or more existing breeds initially. And so this is where you get into also, you have those characteristics that you are um, crossing for or breeding for that you would, would like to show up. And so these are the hybrids. So it might be two or more existing breeds initially. Uh, closing, then closing the herd and breeding. So selecting for the characteristics that you would desire. That's essentially what you're doing when you're breeding or making these hybrids. 
trying to see get the characteristics to show up that um, are most desirable desirable uh, the pita which is french is extremely meaty and muscular uh, with white blackish spots associated with stress genes that result in a meat quality and result in meat quality problems used by some to produce extremely lean, heavy muscle terminal cross sires. Um, Tamworth, fairly muscle, muscular and deep sided, uh, which is known for their bacon goodness. Red color is similar to Duroc, but the heat is rather striking in that it is long and has a snout that is moderate to long and quite straight. So another. Uh, way that you can tell between breeds is their snout. The saddleback Hampshire color with droopy ears referred to as a maternal breed for outdoor production, not confinement system. So some, uh, some of your breeds will do better in confined situations and some just will not. Uh, Vietnamese pot belly are popular with uh, pets, so you see them frequently in people's homes. Welsh white, meaty, droopy ears, um, which is a common and can be confused with the Yorkshire and um, other breeds. And so, just knowing in uh, knowing how the proficiency in their litter or their mothering, how that all ties together for uh, characteristics of breeding and production. So if you read, make sure you read and see how this all this story ties all in together. Dr. Dots, will we have access to this presentation? Uh, no, the presentation will not be posted. I'll show you in a minute where um, basically you can get all of the same information um, off of the site. So swine crossbreeding uses. So you have maternal breeds, your mo most known breeds are your Yorkshire and your lamb rants, and your sire breeds are your Duroc, Hempshire, and your pork quality uh, that's most known for your Berkshire. So moving into your dairy cattle. Dairy cattle breeds, uh, brown Swiss, again is brown, tan, gray, here is dark, dark with light tips, um, horns or poles, both. Uh, it's your, at your mature weight, the cows are very large. It's or originated in Switzerland. So it's average, known for its average production of milk, which is 18,000 pounds, and 4.0% uh, butter, butter fat. So these are hard, heavy bone, thick, dual purpose in Europe. One of the oldest breeds. Cows are large, which, you know, in your reading, you'll see why this is very important for you to have large birthing calves or get them up to weight. They're efficient at eating, putting on weight. Excellent for veal production. Uh, even though adapted to cooler climates, they do well in warm climates. Um, so that those are that adaptability and their resilience in these animals are traits that you would like to cross and look look for to put into your um, your offspring. Your offspring. Excuse me. The Holsteins are very common. See them out in the fields all the time. Your classic. Uh, dairy cattle. Uh, <clears throat> they're black and white. They can be red, which I will show you a picture similar. Uh, they are very large. They have very large cows and they are known for their milk production, producing an average of 22,000 pounds, 3.7% uh, butter fat. So they're very large and rugged. Primary, this is the primary U U.S. breed. Holsteins make up about 70% of total U.S. dairy cow population of approximately 10 million cows. They outproduce all others in total pounds of milk produced. And so these, this breed is um, 
well known and bred throughout the U.S. Um, it's like our, uh, well, uh, as you can see, it's the top producer of milk uh, for us in the U.S. Again, same the red and white Holsteins are similar. They're just red. Uh, slight bigger, 1,500 pound cows, which is pretty big, and they too produce uh, 22,000 pounds of milk. Same 3.7 butter fat. And so they are known for the same reasons and very known and raised and distributed throughout the U.S. So there are um, quite a few species of cattle and swine. And so if you go in and look at the, let me stop right there. Let me go show you all the website. So here is the OSU website and the link is in your um, handout for your lab too. And So this is what the face of the website looks like and it's OSU, Breeze of Livestock. And so they received a large grant, large funding to put together this website with all the different variety of breeds and their background history and characteristics for um, all cattle species. So if you go, I mean, livestock species, I'm sorry. So if you click on cattle at the top, or goats or horses, whatever you're looking for, you go down, they give you a little background and you can click on whatever species that you're looking for and the background and the information as well as a picture comes up. And then some of them have on down at the bottom have additional information. So this will definitely help you with your lab reports. So make sure you utilize the, res the resources that is available to you. And it's definitely good for um, helping you study. So even with our swan breeze, they have them in alphabetical order. And you can go click on one and again, have your background and history picture of exactly what you're looking at and more um, additional information that you can reference. So you should be able to, that link works or just copy it and paste it. Copy it and paste it. Um, in your search engine box and it should pop up. All right, lambwoids. Um, I haven't been on campus, so I'm not sure. I don't know if you all have any llamas on campus. I haven't heard anything about it, so I'm not sure if you do. But llamas are definitely a multi-purpose species. Um, they can be used as a rule. I work with llamas when I was doing my master's research and we use them to protect our goats. And so they are definitely an interesting species to work with. They're very funny to sit back and watch and they are good protectors. Your beef cattle, your British breed, breeds, continental breeds and composite breeds. So your British breeze that sets them apart is <clears throat> that mature and fed, fed at lighter market weights. Uh, they grow slower and have smaller mature slices, sizes, less muscular, more fertile, less cabin difficulties, live and reproduce longer. And so as we go through these characteristic, characteristics, if you go to your reading again, uh, you'll see how this plays into comes and plays into part why the, these characteristics are important to these particular species and how the market is surrounded or um, 
around these uh, qualities or how they play on the quality of these characteristics to make it better. So your continental exotic breeds, they large and mature size, uh, late maturing, heavier muscle, thus heavier yielding carcasses, less fertile, increased calving problems, less marbling, thus lower quality grade. So normally used as sire breeds and cross breeds. Some of the more fertile, moderately, moderately sized exotics are used in both sires and dam breeds. So I think that is also one of your questions on your, um, your lab assignment. So the Angus, which is very, very popular, um, the industry for the Angus cattle, Angus beef, is definitely one of the larger ones, especially in the U.S. Um, they weigh between 1,100 to 1,200 pounds. They desire characteristics and why they do so well in the U.S. Um, is the carcass quality and it's marbling. Uh, fertile, good milking, easy calving females. They uphold pigmented skin. Some of the undesirable traits is breeding problems with the bulls. Uh, might more fighting associated stiffness problems. And so um, when you're looking at bulls or you're keeping the bulls, a lot of these characteristics definitely come into a place, come into play. So you look at the bulls, their temperament and the size of the bull to the, the cow. And so all those characteristics are very important and plays a part in having a successful and healthy herd. Um, they have more nervous dispositions than others. So again, temperament, do not take cold as well as heifers, but not a problem. So again, some um, species and breeds do better in different environmental climate situations than others. So you have to keep that in mind. Your heifer breeds are um, not much your larger, but they're good. They're, they're running in top to so some of your larger. Your second most popular breed, both in pure registration and total numbers. Uh, range adaptability is one of the desired traits. Winter hardiness, hardiness, fertility of females under limited feed conditions. Moderate mature size bulls with excellent libido. Good disposition. Undesirable traits with low milk production. Uh, greater incidence of large teats than other breeds. Uh, susceptible to cancer eye, pink eye, and sunburn others. Do not marble well. Extreme fat causes undesirable yield grades. And that is their uh, how they are efficiently using the feeds and putting on the uh, fat meat quality <clears throat> that they're fed. So another species is the Brahmin. Um, this is the 11th most popular breed. Ease of calving, high degree of terosis, then cross on British breeds. Work very well as damn breeds. Undesirable traits, low fertility, slow growth rates, lack of adequate muscle. So they look pretty big and lean, but look can be deceiving. So getting to the Brahmin and some of the crosses, the Brahmin crosses. So when they do cross, they, they cross them to be more heat tolerant, parasite tolerant, crosses the British and exotic produce, high heterosis. So generally there are some of the undesirable traits that with these crosses that you can have, the nervous disposition, pendulous sheath, meat is, the meat is tough. So not real good uh, quality meat partly because they can't be slaughtered without uh, agitation or excitement. So once they go into slaughter, they are 
again, that goes back to their disposition and nervousness. Uh, so everything ties and plays in together. Charlets, which are very beautiful um, animals. I work with them, had uh, research projects. And so some of the desirable traits, they have very muscular in which you can look at them. They're very muscular, beautiful animals. They put on, um, they grow very fast. Carcasses have desirable yield grades. Um, they're less fertile, milk production needs improving. And so so they have good and good and bad attributes. They're gonna be on your larger, larger side. And they uh, they also is kind of hit and miss as far as their um, temperament as well. I'm not gonna go through all of these. I have quite a few of them. But that's where you guys come in for your uh, learning and researching information. Again, llamas are common in certain parts of the area, parts of the US and some, they are not quite as common. All right, so for your horses, um, you have mules. Mules is a cross between a male donkey and a horse mare. Both males and females are sterile. So make sure you know the difference between the mule, the donkey, and why they um, they are why they have the char characteristics that they have. Uh, donkeys are related to horses and zebras, slower and less powerful than horses, but they. Uh, you and the donkey are definitely um, good assets to have when it comes to uh, farming, especially U.S. and undeveloped countries. Uh, miniature horses, um, I like them, and they serve their purpose. Um, they are easily transported, easily transported. Um, they're more show horses. They're not really used for um, a lot of size like draft horses and um, they're considered draft horses. Um, but they're basically companion animals. You see a lot of uh, parents buying these for their kids. Uh, American quarter horses. American Saddlebred. So you definitely have a lot of species that um, you would like to at least know about and become familiar with. Um, look at them. One of my favorite Tennessee walking horses. Very beautiful animals. Um, they're very uh, common especially in the southern regions. So make sure you're familiar with those. Thoroughbreds, very common. Racehorses. Then getting into your goats. Uh, Tuskegee has goats. Dr. Frank Abramson did his go uh, research in goats. I too also did um, research in my master's with goats. Goats have, there are a variety of species with goats. Over the past few years, um, like I mentioned in lecture, uh, the goat meat products and the goat meat um, are becoming more and more in demand. And so that, with that demand, the goat production has increased and goat farms have and definitely increased in the U.S. compared to uh, 20, 30 years ago. So there are a variety of uh, ghost species. Some are found here and some are not, as with uh, a lot of breeds. You have your cashmere breeds. Uh, production is new in the U.S. Uh, we definitely import a lot of cashmere items. Uh, the first cashmere goat was imported from Australia and New Zealand in the late 1980s. 
And so since then, the cashmere breeders are continuing to grow. Uh, and the industry is continuing to uh, grow within the US. Uh, they are sheared once a year, of course, for their cashmere. Um, and full grown adult buck will yield as much as 2.5 pounds of fleece. The fleece consists of two kinds of firewood you have cashmere and you have your guard. Uh, your guard hair, which is your longer hair. Cashmere is the under coating, closest to the skin of the hair. So you have a variety of different um, species. I'm not with a lot of these. Kiko goats are going to be your taller goats, very fun to work with. Goats are a challenge, but they are very interesting animals uh, to work with. Um, they are mostly used for meat production. Um, your boar goats, they are common over here in the U.S. Um, you can tell a lot of them by the color pattern. Their hair, the head is usually a brownish color. Um, they are used also in meat production and they're low maintenance. Once you have overall healthy herd, then goats are usually um, low maintenance and they re reach puberty early. Therefore, they can uh, be bred and put, in, or put on a breeding system. And we, I was doing some research trying to put them on a uh, birthing plan twice a year and to try to increase their twinning rate. So a lot of, uh, I've seen a lot of these goats actually in uh, Michigan, when I was working in Michigan. So there are a very variety of um, gold species to become familiar with. Um, sheep and sheep meat and products are be increasing, not as much as goats over the past few years, but they definitely have increased. And so uh, Michigan, I've seen quite a few sheep. Uh, the Oxford is one of the ones that you uh, see a lot and there you have the distinct black face and black legs, um, which the rams can be quite large. Again, several varieties come, come familiar with it. And goats and sheep have uh, now, I guess it's said that people are leaning toward those meats because they're leaner, healthier meat. And it's um, another reason why they are coming in demand, the sheep. Certain breeds are uh, dual purpose for meat and their uh, hides. So make sure you know which ones are uh, best for what purpose. And the Hampshire, the distinct uh, face, they have a darker face. Usually black, and the real distinct dark black legs compared to the other one. <clears throat> All right. Just going through and showing you all. And last but not least, um, you have your poultry. Um, I think Tuskegee has a you know, large poultry facility and research facility doing research on poultry. The White Plymouth Rock um, work quite a bit with poultry on the research scent. Uh, the Plymouth Rock, um, these, your white and the speckle color, these are ones you're going to see used mostly for your broilers. And um, they, have, they are larger, some of the larger birds with a lifespan, uh, red face with red earlobes, bright yellow beak, bay color eyes, and single comb. 
And so, you know, if you seen a variety of poultry, you'll know that some of the your chicken species or your one, you'll get to know more which are your layers and which are your more meat birds and the sizes. May everybody may think they're the same size, but the sizes, if you put them all together, they have, are definitely a distinct difference in size for some of the different breeds. And so make sure you are aware of those and can identify those. The Brahma um, is brown, range variety in color. Um, they have ornamental purposes. I'm definitely um, working with a farmer who had one of these. This is a pretty big bird. When you look at it compared, you, they definitely stick out amongst the other uh, smaller hens if they're um, in the um, in the pasture and so they have these feathers that are on the feet it looks like they have boots which has their talon on the back and they are definitely sharp so i've definitely been cut by one of these so these are going to be your larger birds so they are massive in appearance docile red earlobes pecan i was working with a farmer who had one of these and they call them up north uh, Chicken hawks is where they are known to fight off um, like owls and your larger birds that are trying to get the hen. And um, the farmer definitely said he seen them in action. It was an owl that kept preying on the um, hens in this flock. So another species that's not too common over here, but um, you can find them. Um, your leghorn, um, smaller bird. They are mostly layers. They mature quickly, but on our general, they're not large birds at all. Um, they are also prolific egg layers. Number, number one breed used for commercial um, egg production in the US, but they are very noisy and they get excited. And so a lot of the uh, poultry facilities, you will see uh, mostly this bird for laying it. If you have a laying facility, you will definitely see this bird. You have the Cornish hens. Um, again, those are your boilers. So you see Cornish hens in the store. Jungle fowl. Um, Multicolor has a very distinct color, um, so they origination from Asia. And so I've seen the, uh, these here, but they're not uh, like major for your production or for egg or meat broilers. I guess it's used for religion and sport. So goose, I'm sure you see some of those walking around freely. Um, they are industry and they are definitely sold or hunted and uh, are used for meat production. Getting your egg layers, turkeys, other poultry, ducks, definitely. Um, these are dual purpose use for egg and meat production. So definitely a lot of different species. These are additional, um, write these down again as OSU's Oklahoma State University's website. Um, you have the chicken and poultry website. Another gauge or a chicken portrait website. It can be very helpful. Um, 